game? Yeah, really good. It's been a it's been a good few days training and I get the feeling that the, the lads are happy to be back in camp and, and back ready to play for their country. How nice has it been for you to get them all back together after such a long time? For me it's been it's been a godsend. Nine and a half months without a without a camp to work with the players. It's been great to get the boots on, get back on the grass. And like I say, we've had a really good week. Uh, lots of information, lots of refreshing. The, the players' memory from how we finished the last campaign, which we don't forget, was on the back of three good wins. And, and we look to carry that momentum forward. How important do you see this game tomorrow night? I think every, every game that you, you represent your country is important. And tomorrow night will be no different to that. I think if you go into a group section and you can get off to a good start, three points at home would be a, would be a great start in the section. Pretty much, but I've got to say the, the, the quality and the, the training, uh, so one or two little doubts in positions, you've got two players vying for for the spot and as I sit here now, I've probably got 10 out of the 11 nailed down and just mulling one over. To what extent, and you said how important the game is, uh, Stephen, but how, what extent are you using that as a dress rehearsal? For no dress rehearsals. I don't, I don't think you can do that with your country. I think you you have to win, win the next game. So Israel at home... In the League B section of the Nations League is the is the competition, is the game, and that's that's what we try to do. We focus on that. You talked about the three, talked about the three uh, victories last season that we ended on. What have you done to keep that momentum going in the minds of the players? I think as much as anything, I, I tried to select as many boys as possible that that were with us in that camp in the, the November camp. And the mind of the players is, is just to remind them of the positivity that we finished with. I remember after the home game against Kazakhstan, everybody walking out of Hamden with a big smile on their face. And I just reminded them about that. It's, it's important that we keep that positivity around the place. There'll be, Steve, will be no Hamden roar. It'll be more like a, a Hamden echo. What's your, what's your thoughts about playing in front of no members of the town and no support? I honestly... Don't know what to expect is, is, is a truthful answer. Obviously, we're going to miss the Tartan Army. We're going to miss the crowd being in football for me as a spectator sport. And without the crowd, it's it's a different game. The good thing for me is that all the players have already experienced this situation. So it's only myself and the coaching staff. It'll be a little bit different for. I might be able to get more information onto the pitch and make sure that it gets heard. But certainly, listen, it's going to be different. Uh, like I say, football without a crowd is is not really the, the spectacle that we want it to be. And the quicker the crowds are back in, the better. But obviously it has to be safe for that to happen. Well, certainly when you look at the, in the Scottish Premiership, a lot of the, the games without a crowd all end 1-0 or a couple of 0-0s there. Do you think uh, uh, mitigates towards low-scoring matches, the absence of fans? No, I don't, I don't think so. I haven't really noticed I've got to be honest, I didn't look for that trend, but have it haven't really it didn't jump out at me. I, no, I don't think so. I don't I don't think that would have any bearing on it. Every game of football is different and one bounce of the ball or one, one decision can suddenly change the dynamic of a game and you can go from looking like a nailed on nil nil to suddenly being two one, three one, whatever. So no, I'm I'm not i I'm not so sure about that. Many of the players which have spoken to Steve, they say that obviously with the crowd it it energizes them and with it not being there, do you, is that something that you have to say to them that they have, you, know, you don't need to be motivated to play for your country, but there's that extra bit of energy which may, might not necessarily be there. No, I, th I think the players will be, like you say, rightly say, the players will be motivated to play for their country. I think if you if you watch the, the higher level players playing in the Europa League and the the Champions League, the sort of playoff system, if you like, the knockout system, those games were high quality games. So top players, top players. Even without a crowd, will produce high high quality games. How much have you enjoyed working with Kieran Tierney this week? And do you feel that you've got a, a got a plan that you can fit him and Andy Robertson in, and it'll be successful? It's been good to have them both in the squad for the first time. Obviously, it's been a it's been a few camps since Kieran was involved, so it's great to have him back in. And we've we've done some work this week, and and hopefully it comes to fruition in the game. And London Dykes, what's, trained well. What's he shown this week? Yeah, he's trained well. He's looked good. Obviously, been a whirlwind two weeks for for Lyndon. He's he's had all, heads all over the place. A little bit of big move down to London, uh, trying to organise moving down to London with his family, and then getting called up for Scotland. So it's 
it's been a whirlwind couple of weeks and we, we tried to look after him. Would you have any hesitation in starting him if you felt that he was the right person to, to start tomorrow? No, no, I'll, listen, in training, like I said, they've, they've been giving me lots of, lots of questions, the players. Ollie Burks looked very, very, very sharp. Uh, Callum Patterson came in late as a replacement. And it's the first time I've, I've worked up close with Callum. And he's, he's done well for me. So the, those three boys, whichever one I pick up front, will do a good job for the team. We understand that so players will take the knee before kick-off. Uh, how important do, they, do the squad feel that is to do tomorrow? Yeah, obviously they, they think it's very important. It's the first time as a country that we've had a chance to do that. Uh, so we support equality and everything that goes with that message. So it's, it's very, very important. I think that, that both then I know Israel are going to do it as well. So it's important that everybody shows that we're right behind the Black Lives Matter group. Unusually, Steve, for a Scotland squad, I think you only had the one withdrawal. That's a bit of a luxury. Uh, this one, that's two. It's a double. A double. I lost Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Shankland, and, oh, yeah. and Ollie McBurney. So we lost a couple. Like I say, I managed to reply. I'd, I'd already sort of preempted one of those two not being available, which is why I had a little bit. I had 21 outfield players, and when they both dropped out, I called Callum Patterson up. And like I said, Callum's, Callum's done well for me. Steve, have you had an eye on what's happening with the Czech Republic team? And I was like, I'll I think, yeah, like I could go down the boring old route and say we're just going to concentrate on the game tomorrow, but in the current situation, the, the strange times that we're in, I think you have to look a little bit beyond that. I've just been updated by, by Darrell on the situation. The authorities will deal with it. Uh, it's not really for us to comment on. You, you, as I sit here, you've got to have a little bit of empathy for the for the Czech Republic because it could happen to any international squad around the world at any time. So hopefully, everyone who's involved in it is is fine and, and safe and comes out it healthy. And after the Israel game, we'll have a look and we'll see what the what the situation and, and how the how the authorities deal with it, and then we'll just get on with it from there. Can you give us an idea of the, the mitigations that, that all the teams and yourselves have to put in place to avoid situations like this? And you know, obviously the, the hope is that this is going to be a rare, quite isolated is, one team being affected. It's, it's why we're all sitting in here. You guys are all sitting behind the camera, but masked up. We're in camp. Uh, I got tested last week before we came into camp. Since we came into camp, we've all been tested again. So everybody got tested last midweek. Everybody got tested when they came to camp. The UEFA came in and tested everybody. So three tests already. Obviously, within the bubble, we, we still respect social distancing uh, and the the hotel that we use here, a lovely hotel, uh, good food, but the dining area is quite small, so we go to dining in three groups. We don't all eat together, and, and we just keep we keep our distance as much as possible. The meeting rooms are well spaced out, and obviously we try and do as much talking and uh, tactical stuff as we can out there in the fresh air, which you also have to respect a little bit of social distance. But now you allow contact training, whatever, so it's nice to get out there and, and feel a little bit more normal than sitting in a spaced out room with a mask on. Steve, just going back to tomorrow night's game, you say you don't want to, it's a, there's no dress rehearsals in international football, but are, are you concerned about giving anything away, obviously the magnitude of next month's game? I don't think, we, I don't think it's about giving anything away, it's about trying to get three points on the board. Uh, I like the Israeli team, I think they've got some good players. Uh, since I was doing all the preparation for the game in March, they've, they've changed their coach. Uh, the Austrian manager who was in charge has left and the, the technical director has stepped up to take over the team. It's still, still Austrian, so maybe maybe similar. But they'll be saying the same thing about us. We can have a look at them, see what their new manager's ideas are, and they can have a look at us. It won't have any bearing on the October game. In terms of team selection, the eight games in charge usually go with a 4 3 3 or 4 5 1. Have you considered changing formation maybe to accommodate Kieran and Andy Robson both on the left flank? I think as a coach, you, you don't close your mind to any formation. And up till now, I've always used the back four. It doesn't mean to say I haven't considered playing a back three before. Uh, just Steve, only we've only issued that statement yesterday. Are you, are you disappointed in the reaction from certain quarters that has not been in the score removed, been removed from the score cause? Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was over the top, without knowing the full facts and. I think what I've said after it, what Chris Wilder said after it and what Ollie's now added to it, should just put that situation to bed. Uh, I think people before they go shouting off about something should should try and get the full facts. And as I said before, 
45 minutes in a pre-season friendly. When we met up on Sunday, all he hadn't had one minute on the grass. So he did a training session on Monday, he played 45 minutes in a friendly, which I'm sure Chris looked at as a training session. I believe they've got another friendly this weekend. So I would imagine that Ollie will get more minutes on the pitch. And he's working on his fitness to be ready for Sheffield United. He was never, ever going to be ready to play two international games. I saw in the wee look, Steve, you've got, I think in the autumn, you've got eight matches coming up. It's quite a hectic schedule, isn't it? Quite unusual. Yeah, but you've got to give me some kind of leeway after so long out of the game. To give me eight, math, eight matches in three months is really kind of them. <laughs> Possibly eight matches. We have, to win the, we have to win the October game. So it's important to respect that as well. But no, listen, it'll be, it'll be good. Obviously, it's completely different, the, the preparation for this game, because it's not a normal September camp where everybody's done a full pre-season and then plays six or seven league games leading into it. It's not normal. I've got a lot of players here who've, who've only had minutes in friendly games. So it's going to be different. Uh, the last time we got together in camp was November. Everyone fit and ready. The, the team was good. They won the first game. They won the second game. I didn't make any changes to everybody's surprise. But I'm almost 99% certain that between the two games now, I have to make some changes just because of the situation we're in. Next, next month will be different again because it's three games, three games in, a, in an international window which basically becomes three games in eight days. I'm going to have to pick a bigger squad because obviously with the, the protocols, after everybody's been tested before the, before the game, you can't add anybody to the squad. So if somebody was to, was to get a knock in training, I, I can't replace them in the squad. So next month will be a bigger squad. And hopefully going into November, I've got the, the problem of picking a bigger squad as well. Could there be wholesale changes for the second game next week? It will depend on a number of factors, as always, uh, team performance, injuries and player, player fatigue, really, after asking them to play one big international, are, are they capable, do they feel that they've got the, the energy and the legs to do a, to another, another one three days later.